Schedule C. So uh, usually we report on the Schedule E. Now we're looking Schedule C, the normal business form for uh, sole proprietors. Profit or loss from business. Generally, Schedule C is used when you provide substantial services in conjunction with the property or the rental is part of a trade or business as a real estate dealer. So now you, you can see what's happening here and, and you can see the difference because you could say, okay, it's still, it's still like rental property is basically involved. And, and this is why we could see it's not just that the expenses are different for rental property is why we put it on the schedule E because there are situations where you might use the schedule C when you still have, you know, the similar kind of expense situation. It's the fact that when you move to the schedule uh, E, uh, you, you may be doing so because there's this generally this passive activity factor. If you're actively involved uh, in the business, then uh, in a more active way, uh, then you're providing more services, for example, uh, then you might report it on a Schedule C in that case. And if you report on a Schedule C, it's going to be business income subject to the self-employment tax and all that kind of stuff, although most likely not subject to the same kind of passive limitations and whatnot when you have losses in that situation and you get and just note that you can kind of see the back and forth when you when you see the regulations with uh the irs because you can see uh, generally you, you can see the irs basically saying at one time hey look you rental people are taking advantage of rental property reporting massive losses and and it's basically passive kind of activity and then they jumped in and said, I'm just going to call it all passive activity. All rental activity is passive all of a sudden. And that was, and that was kind of a huge hit. And then, and then of course, people that are actually in the business of with real estate came back and said, Hey, wait a second. I'm actually not having passive income. You know, I, I actively participate in this thing and you're limiting my business more than other businesses other than rental income. And then you can see this compromising kind of situation that ends up happening where we have all these different rules on what qualifies as passive and, and active and kind of middle in between for the uh, rental property. So again, generally Schedule C is used when you provide substantial services in conjunction with the property or the rental is part of a trade or business as a real estate dealer providing substantial was a substantial loss for the company services so if you provide substantial services that are primarily for your tenants convenience such as regular cleaning uh, changing linen or maid service you report your rental income and expenses on the schedule c because now you're doing a lot of service items within it use form uh, 1065 us return of partnership income if your rental activity is a partnership including a partnership with your spouse unless it, unless it is a uh, qualified joint venture so we get into that partnership kind of situation uh, with a spouse which gets a little bit a little bit confusing because you would think you would be reporting as one entity uh, with the, the schedule e but it, get, it gets a little bit messy because you actually have two people involved and so note that if it's actually your business if it's a business income and you're reporting schedule e i mean schedule c then the question is well is it possible to, to have a to, to have a a commute you might have different rules for a community property state to kind of split out the schedule c versus non-community property states and uh, it also becomes important to properly allocate the the self-employment and Medicare tax. That's where it gets messy with the Schedule C because the benefits that you will be receiving will be dependent upon how much you paid in that was allocated to the Social Security, Social Security primarily. Substantial services don't include the furnishing of heat and light, cleaning of public areas, trash collection, etc. So in other words, if you're if in your rental property you're furnishing heat and light it's pretty passive it's not like you're actively in cleaning of public areas meaning you're not going into the place into the hotel or something and cleaning it by cleaning the public areas trash collection which again is outside so that's you know etc that's that's not the active participation that would kick you over from doing the schedule e to the schedule c the schedule e usually be what you want to be doing if you can into for most cases because it's well there's pros and cons but 
The pros would be you might not be subject to the self-employment tax and the cons are that you've got the limitations on the losses. So also uh, you may have to pay self-employment tax on your rental income using Schedule SE self-employment tax. For discussion of uh, sub substantial services, see Real Estate Rents in Chapter 5 of Publication 334. Qualified Joint Venture. If you and your spouse each materially participate, participate in. see material participation under passive activity limits later as the only members of a jointly owned and operated real estate business uh, and you file a joint return for tax year, you can make a joint election to be treated as a qualified joint venture instead of a partnership. That will usually be easier because in that situation, you don't have to file a partnership return which would be a separate return from the 1040 individuals and then have it flow into your joint individual return that's going to cost more be more cumbersome if you're a partnership and you would think with the rental property you would be able to do that it would be easier to do especially if you don't have to deal with that added issue of the self-employment tax on the schedule e as opposed to the Schedule C, where you do have to, okay? So this uh, this election, every election, in most cases, won't increase the total tax owed on the joint return, but it does give you each credit for Social Security earnings on which retirement benefits are based and the medical coverage uh, is your rental income is subject to self-employment tax. So if you're reporting on a Schedule C, then that becomes quite important to get that breakout proper. If you make this section, if you make this election, you must report a rental real estate income on Schedule E uh, or Schedule C if you provide substantial services. You won't be required to file Form 1065, the partnership return, for any year the election is in effect. Rental real estate income generally isn't included in net earnings from self-employment subject to self-employment tax is generally subject to the passive activity limits. So if you and your spouse filed a form 1065 for the year prior to the election, the partnership terminates at the end of the tax year immediately preceding the year the election takes effect. So if you file the tax return and then you say, I don't need this partnership tax return, we're gonna drop that, then the partnership should bas will basically dissolve, hopefully. <laughs> and so now you'll be reporting it on the schedule c so once again if if you and your spouse file the form 1065 partnership return for the year prior to the election the partnership terminates at the end of the tax year uh immediately uh preceding the year the election takes place so for more information on qualified joint ventures you can go to irs.gov forward slash qjv